See these things I'm holding? These are CPUs, and these are probably the most important part of a computer. So how do you know which one you want to buy when you're building or upgrading a PC? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. CPUs are sort of like the brains of your computer. Everything you do on your computer goes through the CPU, which makes it an essential part of every PC. There are two big manufacturers of desktop CPUs, Intel and AMD. Both manufacturers build CPUs that do the same thing. They process information and code it as ones and zeros at incredibly fast speeds to make computery things happen. That's the goal of every CPU, whether it's from AMD or Intel, but how each CPU accomplishes those computery goals is a little different. First, let's take a look at our Intel CPU. This is an Intel i5-4690K. It's a four-core processor with a clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. Currently retails for about $240, and it's a CPU we recommend in some of our upper mid-range PC builds. Over here, we have a CPU from Intel's competitor, AMD. This is the FX6350. Has six cores clocked at 3.9 gigahertz. But even though it has bigger numbers compared to the Intel CPU, this processor retails for about half the price, and we recommend it in some of our lower mid-range computer builds. So, what's the deal? Judging by the numbers, you might assume that the AMD CPU would be better than the Intel. After all, it has more cores and a higher clock speed. Bigger numbers are always better, right? Unfortunately, it's more complicated than that. Despite having fewer cores that run at a lower frequency, this Intel CPU uses a more advanced architecture that makes it more efficient and lets it perform better than the AMD CPU. So, what do the numbers mean if they don't tell us how good the CPU is going to be? This is where things get a little tricky. This Intel CPU has four cores. You can think of cores kind of like workers, where one core equals one worker. One worker can get done one unit of work. So two workers should be able to get done two units of work, right? Unfortunately, in reality, it never quite works out that well. Two workers can get done somewhere between one and two units of work, depending on the process they're working on. So, with a process that's easily broken up into multiple tasks like video editing, you can take advantage of a lot of cores. Many other processes, however, are not optimized to use multiple cores. To make things even more complicated, this AMD CPU that we said had six cores? Well, it actually kind of has six cores or kind of has three cores, depending on what it's doing. It's more like three workers who can often do the work of six workers, but we don't want to complicate things too much. Basically, think of a core as a worker. Clock speed determines how fast the workers can get tasks done. A higher clock speed means tasks get done faster, as long as we're talking about raising or lowering the clock speed on the same CPU. For example, if this AMD CPU that's running at 3.9 GHz was instead running at 5 GHz, it would do that work faster. However, clock speed comparisons don't really work between two CPUs built with different architectures, such as this AMD CPU and this Intel CPU. You can't take these two CPUs and predict that one will perform better simply based on the higher clock speed. We could compare this FX6350 to an FX6300 with basically the same architecture running at a lower clock speed and assume that the 6350 will be faster in that case. So if you're really confused right now, don't despair. There is actually a way to figure out which CPU is going to work well for you. The best way to figure out what CPU to buy is to compare real-world performance benchmarks or get recommendations from knowledgeable sources. Here's an example of a benchmark from Anantec that compares our FX6350 and our i5-4690K. These are direct measurements of how well the CPUs perform in real-world applications. In this X264 benchmark, we can see how fast these two CPUs encode video. Our FX6350 encodes at about 81 frames per second, while the i5-4690K can do about 122. These numbers are directly comparable, so if you know that you're going to be encoding X264 video, the Intel CPU is about 50% faster. For another comparison, here's a benchmark of each CPU playing Battlefield 4 with a GTX 770 graphics card. As you can see, the 6350 averages about 59 frames per second, and the 4690K averages 61. Since they're so close in performance here, if you're building a PC that will mostly be used to play Battlefield 4, it might make sense to save some money and go with the FX6350. Of course, people like us do this all day, so if you don't want to get into this level of research, you can check with a reliable source. We'll include some links in the video description below. 
But generally speaking, if you just want to use your computer for browsing the web, word processing, playing old PC games, or watching YouTube and Netflix, you'd be fine with a low-end CPU in the $25 to $100 range. Moderately priced CPUs ranging from $100 to $250 are usually good for more intense tasks such as playing the newest PC games, streaming games on Twitch or YouTube, or editing videos with professional software. These mid-range CPUs tend to be the best value for your money, and most of the CPUs we recommend would be considered mid-range. But you should probably only consider a really high-end CPU above the $250 range if you plan on doing something really intensive like 4K game recording, 4K video editing, really serious design work or production work or some other task that requires a high-end CPU. If you buy a more powerful CPU than you actually need, you might get a little extra performance, but you'll experience greatly diminishing returns on your investment. Since the CPU is central to your computer's performance, you definitely want to get one powerful enough for what you want to do. But think about how you want to use your computer and do your research to make sure you're not spending more than necessary. If you want to learn more about CPUs or find some places to get a good recommendation, check our links in the video description below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you want to learn more about PC hardware, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.